Hi everyone, hope you're well. Here today with the Firewire Seaside by Rob Bacciardo. This board is in the Helium technology by Firewire. And this one comes in at 511, 22 and 3 quarters, 2 and 3 quarters, and that's 41.1 litres. So this is, uh, Rob was calling this the evolution of the GoFish. So the GoFish was uh, his twin fin design and that was uh, that was a fast, skatey, loose board. And this is designed to just add a little bit of performance, a little bit more wave range, uh, and be a bit of a do-it-all fish that's uh, still got the cruisy retro speed, but uh, with a little bit of uh, extra performance added to make it turn and perform in a good wide variety of waves so uh, shape wise it's a nice wide shape uh, the nose is still quite wide but it's been pulled in a little bit more than the go fish uh, it's actually a wider board in general than the go fish which i like the idea of because i haven't actually ridden the go fish myself but uh i found a lot of rob's older shapes were actually quite narrow for me uh, so yeah it's nice to see that width there it's nice to see a really curvy elliptical outline it's one of the few boards that i've seen where uh you know i order my boards quite big and they're quite high volume so it's quite cool to get a board that actually has that same look in the curves as the smaller models do so it's quite a nice curvy outline uh, the rocker is fairly flat but it's definitely got enough rocker to keep you out of trouble uh, there's a little bit in the nose there and you'll see up here there's this if you look at the thickness in the foil in the board you've got this little bit of a beak feature in the nose so it actually carries quite a lot of volume forward and then the uh, one of the biggest features about this whole board is just how much this tail mouse out this tail is incredibly thin at the back uh, like really really thin and that's uh, you know that's even in this board at this at this literage and there's also a huge double concave taken out at the bottom of it so how thin this tail is is actually amplified even more by the bottom concaves in the volume that they've removed back from the board so yeah it's a uh, it's a pretty pretty cool design really it's uh it's concaves i'll show you properly in a minute but basically we've got a little bit of single in here and then as we come down the back we've got a very very aggressive double that runs all the way down the board and it just v's out a little bit in the tail uh the board is set up as a dedicated quad uh so there's no thruster option in there at all the board and the concaves and the design are all based around staying as a quad which is great because quads are one of my favorites uh the construction say so it's the firewire helium technology this is probably one of the lightest boards that you can buy like when i first picked up the helium first time i had one i it almost feels like a blank you you, you wouldn't know there was any glass in there uh, so what the helium technology is is it's an eps core so it's a normal sort of epoxy core and uh Although it looks white, it actually still still retains the parabolic stringer. So as you as you would have seen if you've seen the old firewires, the FST technology, they actually had a balsa wood stringer that goes all the way around, and that's in place of the uh, of the stringer through the middle. So there is there is a stringerless EPS blank. So there's no stringer through the middle of this board, but the rails are acting as a stringer because they're made out of wood now the wood in these rails are a combination of balsa and polonia and i think they're about you know there's about six mil of each so you end up with about probably about 12 mil probably about like half an inch of uh of wood here all the way around and then uh it's still got this bit of a durable top skin as well so uh yeah you've got the lightness you've got the really flexy springy pop that you get in these uh in the in the really good epoxies you know like the the carbon wraps a really good example and the js hi-fi if anyone's ridden any of those you'll get uh you'll get quite a lot of spring and whiz and pop in there it definitely helps you out in small ways so yeah so you've got the durability you've got the lightweight and one of the really surprising things about the helium like when i first picked helium up i was like oh this could just be too light and uh What's really cool about it is it actually dampens chop quite well, which is very surprising. So you can take this out in uh, 
in wind affected days and usually you'd quite often reach for a poly in those days because the, uh, the epoxies can bounce around a bit but the helium seems to do a really good job of dampening that and uh, I've said this before and I think that's that's through having a really good control of the return of flex that's what I think is really important in these epoxies I think you can get you can get a spring back that's too fast so this is this is my theory but I almost liken it to uh, you know if you've got the wrong sort of spring it's like having just a spring in your car with no damper so you know if you had a if you had a car or bike suspension where you just had a spring and no no oil damping to control it the spring will just bounce around like crazy uh, but if you get the if you get the oil flowing through right and the and the damping and the control that makes it quite a lot nicer feel and i personally think that's one of the most important things with uh with the epoxies getting that feel right uh so yeah ride wise i have had this for a wee while now and we had quite a good spell of waves when i got it so within the first few days i got to try it and everything from uh waist high to waist to chest high clean and uh sort of up to head and overhead in kind of junky but with some clean walls and there was there was textured days that were a bit onshore and there was days that cleaned up towards the late end of the session so really got to try it in quite a lot uh it's absolutely really mind-blowingly good uh, i know there's been a lot of hype about it but it, it's a it's a great paddler it paddles easy it's very responsive it's stable uh with the length being so short it's, it's a lot easier to place your feet where they're supposed to be and um, the turn and then with this uh with this narrowed out tail this fin down tail and the double concave it's actually got quite a lot of bite and hold so uh i i was quite surprised myself but i actually think this board's uh especially for our local waves this board is basically a uh, waist to well overhead uh you know there's definitely some waves that were like well overhead here which is probably you know uh i'd call that i'd say i'd basically say this board would be good in two to five foot in our local waves so that's kind of i would call that kind of sort of waist to chest all the way up to over the height of the ceiling uh no problem so that was that was quite surprising uh it's not a mega mega groveler it will grovel uh, as I keep saying, I, I ride like my beanbag as, as an absolute groveler, so, but this will definitely do it. Uh, it's it's definitely more the more high performance end of a fish. Uh, so yeah, a really, really, really good ride, being one of my favorite boards full stop this year. And uh, it's one of those few boards in my quiver where uh, if someone said, hey, you're only allowed a couple of short boards, this would probably be one of them. Uh, it's just uh, so fun, so versatile. Quite surprised how it handled like late drops. Uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of and it just it's just really fun to ride as well. So it's the perfect blend of uh, you know that retro fishy speed. Uh, you don't need to pump it like crazy. It gets going on its own juice quite easily. And uh, yeah, just a super super fun ride. So yeah, I'm uh, gonna show you guys through the concaves and then talk about my fin recommendations. So going through the concaves of the seaside, as you can see, the concave starts quite early. It's not super aggressive down there, but uh, we're just down at the chest sort of area there. And uh, things start to ramp up into being quite aggressive quite quickly, so you can see that double sitting in there that's about the midpoint of the board the halfway point i should say uh, and then we're getting further back and then we're really starting to get into a uh, heavily deepening concave now so as you can see got this very very pronounced very deep double concave running through there and uh one of the things i actually find really interesting myself is that uh you can see that there's the double concave is kind of running from about this point to the middle and there's still a little piece of flatland just here which is uh kind of unusual you see most most shapers generally scoop the double concave like virtually all the way out to the rail and rob's just left this little bit of a flat here which is uh seems like kind of a little bit of a nod to the uh go fish and the midas and the you know the, that body board channel that rob's been doing 
So there we go, getting into the tail. As you can see, you can see this super, super deep, super aggressive double. Uh, as we discussed, this stringer line is still not deeper in the water than the rail line. So it's a true double concave, it's not V. Uh, and then as we're coming through the back, that's just, you know, that's insanely deep. So looking at how thin that tail actually is, and then seeing that much area coming back out of it, you can really appreciate how much volume has been taken out of this tail. And uh, we are now spot on the middle of the uh, of the front fins, and you can see it's still really deep there, and still really deep right off the back of the tail, and uh, still no V there. And we've just gone past the back fins, and there's just that little bit of V off the edge. So it's V, that little bit of V in the tail, and it's still running a double inside it. So you can just see how uh, how deep that is running all the way through the base of the board. But so that's really uh, that's really taking on that sort of baked potato, sweet potato style of uh, super deep double concave for speed, drive, and hold. So uh, yep, that's the concaves. So for fin recommendations for the seaside, personal favorite of mine is the split keel. It's called the split keel because it's basically, the idea is that it's a, a keel fin split into two pieces and just made a little bit larger to make it like a quad keel. I find those to be the uh, really good balance of speed, hold and drive and they still turn. Uh, they might not be ideal for the smaller guys and girls in smaller boards, but uh, yeah, I personally really like them. And um, the same template in Futures is called the Controller or the Lost Seaworthy Quad. The other fins to go for are the Rob Machado Seaside Quads. They're available in both Futures and FCS2. I'm afraid I haven't got those to show you anymore. I actually let mine go. Uh, they're basically, the front is like a, it's a large upright twin fin and the back is two low aspect like mini keels and they're kind of just stabilizers but they're very they're very low in the depth uh i just personally found them a little bit slippery for me uh but they complement the board really well that big fins at the front and small small fins at the back it really sort of goes together quite nicely with the tail and the thickness in the tail i just found them like a little bit slippery and a little bit inconsistent with the drive and hold they were given so uh yeah, that'll probably work for a lot of people though, because if you're riding a smaller board or a smaller volume per weight of your weights, you'll probably find those work quite well. So don't let me put you off those. are probably a really good fin for the, uh, definitely for the slightly smaller guys. Uh, the other thing that people will probably try and with the seaside is the keel fin. Now I believe it works quite well as a keel fin as well. I haven't personally ridden it as a keel fin myself, uh, but yeah, this is the, FCS2 modern keel and that's a really good feel I've ridden that in other boards and it's got good depth and good area so you actually get hold and drive and it's nice and controlled uh, in the futures fins the Captain Finco Chris Christiansen fin is virtually the same template as that so that's a really good one to go for uh, futures do their own K1 and K2 keels and uh, the new CI keel fin is really good. I can highly recommend that because I've got that in my uh, in my twin keel fish. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing to try and apparently works really well. The other option to go for is the uh, twin and trailer, but obviously with this being a dedicated quad, it'll either be just a twin or it'll be a twin and two trailers. So uh, yeah, that's another thing to play around with. Uh, this is the FCS2 Power Twin. I find those really good. They're quite a nice big fin with a little bit of rake to them as well. Uh, and the nice little trailer. If you put them together with two trailers, they're probably gonna be a bit much. So, you know, smaller guys, you can probably just ride these and forget about trailers completely. And if you're a bigger guy, you might wanna try something like that, but you could also look at going a slightly smaller twin fin and two two trailers like that. Uh, there's lots of stuff to play around with. So. For smaller guys or anyone that's really wanting to push the performance of this board, you could try just a standard quad fin. Uh, you know, for someone a bit bigger like me, you might want to go to something like the stretch fin. This is a bit bigger than the old one. Uh, so that would be quite a good quad set to try. Uh, you could just ride your normal quad fin. So your quad set that's basically like your two fronts of the thrusters and then maybe two performers or a similar size quad rear. So just like your standard quad fin, basically, if you really want to get the most performance out of it. 
So yeah, the Firewire Seaside, an absolutely cracking board. Uh, definitely an uh, instant favourite for me and probably going to be an all-time classic, I would say. Uh, it's got the speed and flow of a retro fish, but it's got the ability to perform a little bit more than most of those retro fish when you want it to. Uh, it's got the wave range. It feels great. It's nice and light in the helium technology. It's quite durable. Uh, you can play around with fins a little bit. Um, yeah, it's just a cracking all-round fish board. Don't get it confused with being a performance board. It's not high performance board. It's still going to feel like a fish, but it's going to feel like a really high performance fish and it's really going to uh, surprise you at what you can ride it in, I would say. So uh, yeah, my advice is uh, don't go too high on the volume on them. I personally would usually ride like 42, 43 liters in a gravel board, uh, even a little bit more than that sometimes. And uh, I was a bit worried about this being too low to gravel at 41.1, but uh, honestly it paddled absolutely fantastic. It's super stable with the extra width and uh, just having a little bit lower volume because it paddles so well anyway, it'll take it take it to be a more of a performer for you. So yeah, absolutely fantastic board, highly recommended, one of my absolute favorites so far. So hope you enjoyed that, thanks for watching. If you could like and subscribe, that would be great. And uh, we'll see you soon for some more reviews.